Okay, hello YouTube. Um, we're going to be taking a look at another high-level trap. We're going to be taking a look at a high-level trap in the Taimanov variation or the Pelican uh, variation of the Sicilian. So it starts off with e4, uh, c5, uh, knight f3. Uh, we can do knight c6, or if it's the Taimanov, it's e6. But knight c6, d4, c takes d4. Knight takes d4, and we're just going to go straight into um, what's typically called the, uh, the the Pelican variation, or I think the the Sveshnikov variation. Uh, uh, knight f6, knight c3, e5, knight on d b5, d6, bishop g5, a6, knight a3, b5, bishop takes f6, g takes f6, knight d5. F5. Now, anybody that's familiar with the theory knows that the theoretical move here is actually just e captures f5, bishop captures f5, and then c3. And if you want to play like that, that's fine. That's definitely uh, considered one of the best ways to play. But if you want to, with basically no cost to white, you can play a trapping move here as well. You can play the move c3. And this move is kind of trappy because what it's doing is it's actually setting up a cute little sacrifice on b5. And actually the sacrifice was, was also possible. Uh, some people like to play the sacrifice right away. But these days, after bishop takes b5, a takes b5, knight here, one of the issues is that after rook to a4, uh, theory holds that this position is actually better for black, or in maybe white's best case scenario is he gets uh, some sort of perpetual after knight c7, king d7, queen h5. And of course, other things have been tried here. Sheer ups b4 has been tried. Um, the old move c4 uh, was tried. And um, there's been many attempts to, to make this work for white. Um, but right now, black is coming out on top. So of course, if you know that this is the defense, then you start to understand very quickly why the move c3 is such a clever way to set it up because the queen is now covering a4 and that means that this defense with rook a4 is no longer possible. Um, so what white's hoping for here is that black is just going to see a big juicy pawn in the center of the board and that black is going to take it. So white is hoping that black is going to play f captures e4 and then of course white will proceed now with bishop takes b5, a takes b5, and then knight takes b5. And as it turns out here, nothing is going to be totally satisfactory for complete equality for black, actually. White should have a sizable advantage in all lines at this point. So for starters, rook a4, not possible. We're going to just play queen takes a4. So the other possible defenses, well, let's just go with the worst first, rook b8, holding the rook, preventing the fork, knight b8, knight b c7 check, king d7, Queen g4 check, f5, queen f5 is actually checkmate. So rook b8 is not a good idea. So instead of rook b8, another option is rook a7. This is a typical way to defend against this problem. We just sacrifice the exchange right away. It works in the other line, actually. So knight takes a7, knight takes a7, and now we see the value of having this queen having the ability to go to a4. It wasn't just to prevent rook a4, it was also to set up this very cute tactic with queen a4 check where we're hitting the king and we're hitting the knight. Of course, the bishop to d7, we're taking the free knight. And the only other way to block, since the king square is blocked, would be queen d7, and then we have knight f6 check picking up the queen. So that is just simply winning material and winning the game. So these two defenses don't work which leaves one option available that makes any kind of logical sense, and that would be queen g5. And this has actually been theoretically um, worked out. This has all been played before. Um, it went knight c7 check. Uh, we had a king d8. Wanted to keep the bishop open. Knight takes a8, although it didn't make a ton of difference because he didn't develop that way anyway. Queen g2, rook f1, forced. We can't lose the rook to check. So bishop a6, hitting the rook, threatening queen takes rook checkmate. Knight 83, forced. It's good to know all the forced moves whenever you're playing a trap. 
Queen F3, threatening the exchange of queens, but also threatening our rook. So we're going to take a second and we're going to move our rook. Now, if he's played queen h2, again, we would have gotten to take huge advantage of the fact that the queen can go to a4. We have queen a4 check here. I mean, not, not check. We have queen a4 hitting the knight, hitting the bishop. And if bishop takes f1, we have knight takes f1, which then hits the queen and hits the knight on c6 and is winning material and winning the game. So, queen h2, no good. We'd have to play queen f3. And then our rook is attacked, so now rook g1. And now bishop d3 was played in the one game where this was played. He's trying to keep um, white hemmed in. And white's only interest in this game was just kind of evacuating his knight and keeping his material. So that game finished with knight b6, bishop h6, so now enough pressure is on the position he felt the need to exchange queens. He brought his last piece into the game with tempo, forcing e4, and then he simply brought his knight back to d5. And he's managed to consolidate his material, and White went on to win this particular game. Um, so the fancy threat uh, you can play against uh, the, the pelican variation is you can throw in this c3 and you can set up this bishop takes b5. Now, of course, they can just transpose back into the main line with a move like, say, bishop g7. And in that case, you would just play e captures f5 and you would go back into your main line and you would play your main line theory. And you would just have a perfectly acceptable position with white, no harm, no foul. But if they fall for it and they play f captures e4, you can get a pretty quick victory with the move bishop captures b5. So I hope this was helpful and I hope it helps you in your games.